it's Ryan. I just want to welcome you guys in. I'll give you my whole monologue in a two-minute uh, quick synopsis. Is we just want to thank you for being here today, uh, joining us for our online service with Life Coast Church. We're incredibly thankful that you're here. We've got a powerful worship and message uh, prepared for you today as Pastor Mike and Holly lead us into a portion of uh, a discussion about fear and faith and how that plays into our lives. So what we want you to do is engage with us today. Feel free to type in and just say hello or type in a prayer request, or we actually have an interactive portion later on as we uh, work through some whiteboard questions and really have a time of interaction between us. So use this as a time to come together as a family to worship, uh, to pray, and uh, let's just go into worship right now as we cut over to Leo and the team. His name that shakes the mountain tops, the only word that breaks the curses off. Your name, the one that covers all, it's higher than the others, higher than the others. Amongst the mountain tops, the only word that breaks the curses off. Your name, the one that covers all, it's higher than the others, it's higher than the others. For the faith and wonder, I will say no other name but yours, name but yours. For the faith. In wonder, I will say no other name but yours, name but yours. This name that storms the gates of hell, the only word my life will live to tell all the earth will bow beneath the sail it's higher than the others higher than the others full of faith and wonder I will say no other name but yours No other name but yours, name but yours, Jesus, 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 Jesus. There is power. 
We're so glad you're here. We just want to celebrate some things that are that are going on here at Life Coast. And we've had some great outreaches this week, even despite the fact that we've been in. Yeah. We've still been reaching out. So we had awesome. a, our food pantry is still doing some amazing things, helping some people who are hurting. They're doing things a little differently, but they're still, they got uh, more food in, and they're able to help people just by uh, putting food in the cars, People aren't coming in to shop, so they're adjusting what they're doing, but we're still finding creative ways to help people. And uh, this this week, yesterday, we had a drive through communion where people could, cool could drive up <laughs> and get prayed for. It was communion and prayer, and uh, we served them communion, all mm -hmm. uh, prepackaged and sterilized. And... Uh, and we also got a chance to pray with so many people who came through uh, because they're just yearning for those connections. They're yearning to connect with the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much to our prayer team also for being willing to come out and do that. So Absolutely. we appreciate it. Yeah, our prayer team's awesome. They were praying over uh, for people from outside their cars. It was really, really cool. And one of our favorite uh, outreaches that happened this week was we did First Responder Friday. And what that was is we took a local vendor. Uh, in this case, it was a pizza place. And uh, we ordered a, a mess of pizzas from them and we delivered them to one of the local police departments, one of the local sheriff stations, and fed all of our first responders. So we're going to continue to do that each Friday. We're calling it First Responder Friday. And we're going to bless our first responders, whether they be police, fire, nurses, all those, all of those folks who are on the front lines. And so just want to remind you about uh, giving. We're still uh, moving forward in, in helping people, our food pantry, like I said, first responders. And uh, we understand that some of you are out of work. And, and what we're saying to you is we don't want you to give. We want to be able to help. So let us know if we can help it anyway. But also, <clears throat> if you're able, if you're still working, if you, if you uh, have steady income and you're part of Life Coast Church, we still uh, are, are looking to bless people. We still want to be the church that blesses our community. And so we can only do that when all believers are on board going in the same direction. And so your giving helps with that. And now we're going to go to uh, start with our prayer time with uh, Miss Stacy. And uh, we're going to be praying for our Life Coast family. Let's just say I miss you guys so very, very much. And we haven't stopped praying for you. And, and it's Miss Stacy's birthday today, too. So oh. say happy birthday to her. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm, As my kids say, I'm 24 again, but I'm not. All right, would you all just, just come before the throne of God? Let's pray this morning. Father God, I thank you so much for my Life Coast family and uh, how we just miss them all so much, Lord. But I know that you are working um, individually in all of our lives, God. And uh, you have not... This has not stopped your church from coming together, Lord, and just uh, bringing you praise and glory and ministering to our to our community, God. I thank you, God, that um, you are still moving in amazing ways. This morning, God, we just want to lift up some of our, our family members. We think of Carolyn this morning, Lord, who's still not feeling well from her surgery. God, I just pray in the mighty yes, name Jesus. of Jesus that you would just bring yes, complete Lord. healing to her thank body, you, God, Jesus. that she would be able to just get around and do what she's been doing been doing for so long, God, that you would continue to use her and her testimony for your glory, God. So again, Father, we praise you that you will bring healing to Carolyn this morning. And God, we pray for Gary, um, who's in quarantine right now, um, who thinks he may have come in contact with somebody with the virus. God, we just pray, Father God, mm. that this is just nothing, yes, that um, he is safe and he is fine. Um, I pray that you would give him and, and his family a, a sense of peace right now, God, yes. that you are in control of this situation you, and, uh, and you love him so much, God. Just give him a piece. 
Father, we pray for Henry, who's uh, still in the hospital, Lord. And I thank you that um, every day he's making progress, yes. God. And I, I know that he and, and his wife are giving you praise for that, Lord. Would we pray for continued healing on his body, full recovery, full use of everything, Lord, uh, so that he can be and he still is a living testimony for you, yes, Lord. Lord. Father, we pray right now for... Um, our teachers and the parents and, and the students at our schools that are starting the virtual schools yes. tomorrow, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, that this works out amazing so that teachers can be confident in uh, giving their students what they need, Lord. And we pray for all the parents who are home with their students, Lord, that, that you would just give them a peace and the ability to do just the best that they can, Lord. And we also pray this morning, God, for sweet little Miles. Uh, we, God, we pray for no more yes, transfusions Jesus. in his Thank body, you, God. Jesus. We pray for growth. We pray for weight gain. We pray for healing, God. We pray um, that this little, little baby would just uh, grow to know and love you as Lord and Savior. And Father, we just, again, pray protection over our church family this morning, Thank Lord. You, Lord any illness, anything that would come in their way, Father God, we pray that you would just protect our homes, Lord, that you would protect our families, that we would just take this time where we are secluded more as families to just grow, Father God, that we would just reach out to you. We would be in prayer together, God. We would just be taking this time to reconnect, um, just to restore healthy relationships, God. We know that you plan this. There's a purpose in this, God, so we're just trusting you with it. Jesus, we thank you for all you've done. We thank you that you're here with us this morning. And we just give you the honor and we give you the glory in your name. Lord God, we pray for our leaders here in our community who, who are uh, working diligently to put things together, whether it's school department or our uh, civic leaders, Lord. We pray for them to have the mind of Christ, to be able to be able to answer the call of, of this emergency, Lord. We thank you for some so many of the frontline people who are doing uh, tech work and first responders as we prayed for. We got a couple of them right here who do a lot of the, the technical stuff for our, our community, and we just pray for them to give them stamina, give them protection, Lord, uh, uh, from this, Lord. We pray for our state leaders, our, our state, uh, our governor, our senators, our um, our uh, state state senate our our state leaders lord as they as they look for us as they look out for us lord may they have a heart for the people and most of all a heart for prayer and a heart for jesus lord we pray for our president our our congress our senate as they make decisions lord that they would be selfless in that that they would look to you for guidance lord thank you for a president who brings in spiritual leaders that to pray over him and with him and for him and we just thank you for that lord we ask you to heal our nation lord let us cut back to who we are, a generous and prosperous people, Lord, because we've been blessed by God. Help us to cry out to you once again as a nation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want uh, different ways to give at Life Coast, we, we, uh, I'm on the board here. You can go to www.lifecoast.org, or you can text to give at 84321. One And so uh, let me just pray one more time for Pastor Mike and Holly. They're going to be following right up here. Father, we pray for Pastor, M Pastor Mike and Holly, Pastor Holly, as they bring our message today. We are uh, just looking forward to what they have to share. We know that, that they're excited to bring a message to the community. So be with them. Bless them as they share from your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, it looks like we're on. Are we on, Ryan? Hi, Life Coast Church. <laughs> Life Coast, it's so good to see you. Uh, welcome to our home, Pastors Mike and Holly. You see the M and H up there, so we're in our home. So welcome to our Lanai. Uh, first, I want to say thank you so much for all of the teams that are doing all they need to do to make this happen. We've got tech teams that are doing things that I have no clue what From you're different doing. Different locations. Different and locations and uh, the worship team, Pastor Jeff, Stacy, uh, everyone who are doing what they need to do uh, gives us a huge mad respect for tech people <laughs> that do TV production. We've had to learn so many things. Yeah. So, and <laughs> it makes you feel old. And a lot of grace to you guys because as we kind of get through this, um, we're trying new tech things every, different, every week. So thank you for being gracious to us while we learn this. Uh, we're coming to you from our home, and we just want to share a word that God has given us this week. 
uh, for Life Coast Church, for our family. We miss you incredibly. Yeah, we miss you. Seeing your faces. Um, yeah, just, just especially on Sunday, but especially throughout the week and the different groups and the different outreaches. So it's been kind of a heartbreaking thing for us not to give you our hugs, but we'll give you air hugs yeah, today. Yeah. Nice and uh, safe. Give you air hugs. And we're so excited for all those people that are joining us that get to be our extended family today of Life Coast. We're so glad that you're on too. And make sure you're in those comments. Yeah, welcome, welcome. And uh, one day we'll be back in a school and then uh, eventually a family center. Uh, but for now, enjoy church in your PJs, coffee yeah! and a Danish or something healthy. I feel like a talk show host. <laughs> we don't have any <laughs> guests. So Jesus is our guest today. So we want to give you a word that he gave to us. And um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you know me, you know I love to do whiteboard exercises or post-it exercises. We're going to start off with that. So here's your question for the day. Get your notepads out. I want you to write some things down, and then you're going to enter those in the comments. Uh, at the right time, we're going to take those and put them up on the whiteboard that's next to me. Here's your question for the day. If God gave you the time that you need, what are things that you would start doing in your life that you, would, that you know that would be good for you? for your family, and for your relationships. If God gave you the time you need, the, the time you've been asking for, that extra time, what are some things you would inject into your life that you know that would be good for you, your family, and your relationships? So take notes and put those in the comments because they're going to get those over to me when we get to that exercise. Uh, we have a lag time here, so that's why we have to do this up front. So again, thanks. So where are we all at in this? We've been con confined for a couple weeks yeah. now. This is our third live stream uh, online totally with church. And so I've been talking to some people and how you doing? What's your response to what's going on? And I get a range of responses all the way from, it starts with, ah, this whole thing's a hoax. This whole thing's stupid, you know? And it's like, whoa, you're kind of like, really still? And yeah, but there's people still think it's all hoax. There's uh, people think they're an absolute terror. Yes. They're so fearful and they just can't get uh, the weight off them of, the, of this uh, devastating crisis. And then somewhere in the middle, I've had somebody actually say, well, it is what it is. One day it'll all be over. <laughs> and so that's the, the responses you're getting from this. And for me uh, and for Holly as a leader, we come to God and say, God, uh, how do we lead in a time like this? I know uh, Tuesday God impressed something upon me because I actually asked the question, God, how would I lead during this time until we can get back to normal? Mm. Because, boy, it's so, it so nice being in that school and so nice having everything set up, ready to go. And I just asked God, how would I lead in this time until we get back to normal? And I felt the weight of God come over me as if he told me, I don't want things to get back to normal. Right. I know that scares some of you like, what? I actually yeah. heard him, felt him say, I don't want things to get back to normal. I want this season this crisis, whatever's happening here, whatever you call it, I want this to put a spark in my church to do something new, to be someone new and not go back to normal. Uh, I felt God say, I have so much for you, Life Coast. I've given you such a great big vision to, to reach this community, to build a family center, to touch people where they're really hurting and give them hope. And I have so much for you, but what I have for you and my whole church wasn't going to get accomplished where we were at right. and with the people we were. He has something more for us and therefore he wants to create something in us. Here's the truth. Uh, God's people can accomplish uh, what God's, the vision he's given them, but not where we were at. We have to become something else. If we're all truthful, I think in the last few months I've heard multiple people say, more I'm stressed, I'm strained, my relationships are tense, my budget is stressed out to the max. I don't have any time, right? I've heard that so much more. If I only had more time, we're a very busy people. And I think God wanted something to change. I think he wants to take this seriously. Uh, if, if you were going to move forward to accomplish vision, something had to change within us so that we wouldn't go week by week saying, if we only had more time, we would do dot, dot, dot. For, for the Lord and for our families. So our whiteboard exercise today, um, I think Holly's gonna turn this for us, but you've got the question, if God gave you the time that you needed, what are things that you would start doing in life that you know that would be good for you, your family, or your relationships? If God gave me time, I would what? What would you do? Uh, we got the, the gallery out here is probably going to shout some things out and you've commented on some things. So what are some of those things? Uh, I've got one here that said uh, family dinners. 
Oh, family dinners. That's good. That's good. How many of us get so busy that we aren't having our family dinners, or at least a couple a week? Yeah, family dinners, family at least dinners. two, three times a week, right? <laughs> Anything well, else? Another one says, uh, I, I would go to the gym, working out, taking care of the physical body. Now you can't go to the gym. They're all closed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I take would, care of the body. I would pray more. Pray more. Absolutely. Okay, what else we have? Uh, spend more time doing discipleship, being more discipleship. Oh, relationship. yeah, discipleship oriented, taking others through the word of God or growing in their faith. Yep. I got another one here that says I would create more, create. Ah, be creative. Be creative in life for God, in ministry. Yeah. Yep, what else? You have to be quiet to be creative, so. Ooh, be more quiet. I like that. Okay, one. that was Thank mine. You, <laughs> I've be never more quiet. told you to be more I've quiet. I've never been quiet. I've never ever. told you to be quiet. <laughs> Another one says I'd be more intentional. Oh, that's great. More intentional. Intentional with the things of God, with relationships, with family. And the last one I got is just Everything. spending more family time, more time with uh, their spouse as well as their kids and worshiping together. Wow, that is great. So um, I know I've heard many people say, I'd like to read the Bible more. I'd like to read some commentaries, learn more how to study the Bible more, how to walk others through the Bible more, uh, things like that, how to apply it better. I heard a lot of these things, and that's great. Now, let's make a list of some of the reasons or excuses we're not doing this. In other words, why don't we get these things done? And uh, what are your reasons? And I'll call them excuses, but I'm just gonna throw a few down since we have the lag time here. But everyone would say, I don't have time. But let me just qualify that. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. God has given us plenty of time to get the things that are meaningful and valuable done in our lives. So what do we do? We choose to spend it in the wrong places. Fill our time. We fill our time. So time is not, or lack of time is not an excuse or reason because you're the one that chose how to fill your calendar. Well, so what are the things that we do uh, that keep us from injecting these valuable things in our life? How about, what do you think? Uh, scrolling on the social media. Oh, social media. Spending you a lot go, of time. Not that I would ever do that. But. You had to go right there, didn't you? Just bam, hit it. Social hard. media. It's yeah, amazing scroll, how scroll, you're in there scroll. and you don't realize how you just get lost in there and then you're down like 20 videos and memes and yep. all this stuff, and, which and, you still can do now. Um, uh, we've got uh, extracurricular activities. You might be into uh, the gym. Yeah, the gym, <laughs> yoga class. Uh, yoga. Some people still do yoga. I, I guess they still softball, do yoga. <laughs> softball, yeah, uh, athletics. Kids. Let's let's talk about kids. You know, we want to be um, great parents, and now we've got this new league, or we got the uh, travel ball league. We were involved in that. Oh, and that five took kids, up three nights a week instead crazy. of one night a week, and you get a lot of those things that are happening. Um, a lot of extra hours at work, maybe. Maybe you've got some OT coming up, and you're thinking, yeah, we want to go on that carnival cruise, but let's just put in another 10 more hours a week for the next three I don't think anybody's going on a cruise. No cruises right now, <laughs> but, you know, they'll be back out there again one day. There's a lot of things that we fill our time with, and many times we let months go by before we even look at that calendar. Many of us don't calendarize anything. So we just think, where did the time go? But if you actually put every activity in your calendar and, and reviewed it during the week, you'd be like, oh my goodness. So all these things really are opportunities for us and we get to select what we put into our calendar. Hey, can I just say, some of them are good, but are they the best? But are they the best? But almost all of us get to a point in life where we say, man, something's got That's to change. Good, yeah. And here's what we know about God. It's happened many times in our life. God is a God of interruptions. <laughs> you know, we love the God who's got a love and, the, you know, and, and he's for us. But the truth is, a God is, can be a God of interruptions. There's times where he can just bah, put the pause button on us. And, and in a moment's notice, a lot of these excuses are taken away. Right. If you go back to our list, how many of these things down here can we not even do anymore? Can't go to the gym anymore. You can't do your yoga at, at a club anymore. You can't go travel ball. You're not watching sports on ESPN. I know that a lot of baseball people not happy right now. You can still do social media. But even then, I think a lot of us are getting sick of the scrolling and things like that. God has a way of putting a pause button, and, and he can answer prayer. If you said, God, if I only had more time, he can take those things away and actually, uh, what I would say is put us into exile. 
sometimes. <laughs> he can actually, I would say this is God's big timeout. Yeah. Maybe he's put us in timeout for a little bit to let us pause and think. In the Bible, God's chosen people, Israel in the Old Testament, spent some time in timeout as well. They were put in exile. God brought Israel out of Egypt. They brought them up to a promised land. And then he said, this is all going to be yours, a land of great opportunity, kind of like the one we live in. And he's, before he lets them enter, he says, I've just got a few things that I need you to, to, to make sure you do. Now, there are a lot more than a few, but there are two that are really important things that, that are uh, prevalent or really relevant to what we're doing today. The first thing, they were to enjoy a Sabbath rest on the seventh day of the week. In other words, they're going to go into a land of milk and honey, but there's a lot of work to be done, and they could work for six days, but they were to enjoy a Sabbath day rest. And then they were to enjoy a Sabbath year every seven years, right? So they were to work hard for six days, produce, take opportunities, get ahead, thrive. But on the seventh day, shut the thing down. Get back with your family because God knows we never stop. We'll never stop. We've already proven that. We'll keep going and going at whatever it is we're focused on at the expense of our relationship with him and our relationship with God. Okay, so the seventh day was to be, you know, just put a pause on it, get back with family, get back relationships with God and with others and get the richness of God back into our life. But then you had the seventh year called the Sabbath year. And uh, I'm going to read this verse for you. It's Leviticus 25, 2. It says, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land, I'm going to give you this great land. You must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years, sow your fields. In other words, work and produce. And for six years, prune your vineyards and gather their crops. So take everything in. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest. So on the seventh year, the land would get a reset. So nutrients would fill it up again and the soil would recharge. But families would do the same thing. They would get a break from productivity and drivenness, and they would be they would have to trust God that on that seventh year, he's going to provide. So they're just going to shut it down and say, God's going to provide for that because we're going to be about better things and valuable things. OK, so they would get a reset. They'd slow down. They'd fill their hearts back up with the nutrients of our relationships again. A rest would give them a, a strong spiritual relationship with God and their trust and their faith and with their family and their kids and ensure the next generations, our kids and their kids and their kids, would have a strong relationship with God and follow his ways. And it would allow God to also reveal his purposes in them, because on the seventh year, they would be allowed to change some things up every seven years. Have you ever heard of the seven-year itch, Holly? Yes. <laughs> the seven-year itch, if you're older, you know what that is. My son-in-law said, I don't have a clue what that means. <laughs> seven-year itch. Every seven years, there's kind of an antsiness that we get to, and it makes us want to change things up. And, and But many times, we're locked into a job, we're locked into things, and we just can't stop. We can't stop and attend to what God might be doing in our lives. And so God built that in. So every seven years, re, he, might, he might redirect you, repurpose you, get you back into focus. And if you just push through those things, you'll eventually hit midlife crisis because you'll eventually you want never, to change. You never got that break. <laughs> right. So um, this would ensure, you know, every seven years to get a full, rich life directed by God. But you know what? They didn't take the break. They chose not to take the break. They didn't observe the seventh day, nor did they observe the seven years. And finally, God says, I had enough. I need to put a pause. I'm going to put you in time out in the country of Babylon. And Jeremiah tells us that they were going to be there 70 years. In other words, they thought they were going to be over there just for a few weeks, and then God was going to restore them back to the land. And Jeremiah said, no, this is actually a reset for you. It's going to be 70 years. Why 70 years? Because they didn't observe the Sabbath year for 490 years. All the way back to King David did they choose not to observe that Sabbath. And so God says, you know what? My land needs a rest. My people have gotten so far away from me. But they didn't rest. They didn't recharge spiritually. So by the third generation after Solomon, they were actually worshiping other gods. They were actually um, putting up graven images. And some of them weren't worshiping a god at all. And matter of fact, they were supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. By three generations, they were just like the Gentiles. They weren't worshiping at all. And so God said, it's time to get my people back to what I created them for and the purpose 
I have for them. And so he hits the reset button and makes them sit and recharge and replenish. And that kind of happened in our life once, didn't it, Holly? It did. Um, this actually fits well because when Mike was 29 years old, he caught a rare virus. Sound familiar? Um, it was a really scary time. It was just him, though. And um, he ended up being in uh, the hospital and ICU. And they came to me and they said he may not live. And during that time, it was a very scary time for our family, obviously, um, and very fearful. Uh, but I want to tell you, the most incredible things came out of that time. And I would, now we look back at that time and we're, we're so thankful for. And you know, that's really hard to imagine that we could be thankful for what's going on in our country with the coronavirus. How can we be thankful for this? But God calls us to be thankful. And during that time, I just want to tell you some of the things that happened in our family. They literally, because of that reset on our life mm. where everything stopped and obviously Mike lived, praise God. Um, we saw miracles, mm. but we, we were eager to see miracles. We were asking God for miracles. We were stepping into a place where we were so desperate for God because of fear, because of that, we needed to find his joy in our life. Mm. And he delivered in such huge ways. And the things that happened in that time, we actually have taken for the next 30 years of our marriage and our family. And if that time hadn't happened where we reset and we could really take in all the things that we were learning, we would not be the family we are today. Honestly, we would not be sitting here today uh, as uh, pastors and of Life Coast Church, uh, planting the church and uh, lovers of Christ in the way we are if we didn't have that time to stop, pause. Everything stopped. We had a business that just we had to like have other people help with. Uh, so many great things happened, and I want to share some of those. So one thing we realized was life is so fragile. And, you know, there were stupid things. We were young, 29, fighting over dumb things. After that, like, we just realized, like, I almost lost him. Like, he became so precious to me, and every moment with him became precious to me. And we felt so more madly in love with each other because we realized all those stupid things we fought about, none of that mattered. So that reset was so good for our marriage. And that reset made us realize, you know what? We didn't want to build our kingdom. We wanted to build God's kingdom because life is but a vapor. It's short and it wasn't worth building something that wasn't eternal. So we started really thinking, how can we, how can we build God's kingdom, something that's eternal? And so we started doing family devotions with our kids. We started saying, you know what? This is going to be a priority in our life. We're going to turn off the TV and we're going to actually get our kids around. We would sing worship. Mike would play the guitar. He learned the guitar. Um, the kids would be around, you know, with their things playing the guitar. Uh, and we bonded as a family after that because we realized that we didn't want to go back to being busy, busy, busy mm -hmm. and not building God's kingdom. And we realized how important it was for us to instill those values in our kids. So family time became very important. During that time, you know, when I thought he was going to die, I had to stay positive. I had to walk into the hospital and tell him, you're going to be great. You're going to do awesome. This is going to pass. This virus is going to pass. And we're going to have an amazing life after. And we're going to do so many great things together. I had to speak positivity and truth and God's truth that God loves us. Uh, and that changed our thinking because what we spoke came to be. And so I want to encourage you, stay positive parents. Make sure you're speaking what can be, not your fears to your kids. Speak hope, speak encouragement. That's what we're called to do as the church. That's what we're called to do as the head of our families. Um, what we saw is our faith was tested. Yes, and I know some of you right now, your faith is being tested. I know some of you are, are afraid. And this is a time that you have to capture those thoughts and replace them with the truth of God. He loves me. He has great things mm -hmm. for me. Uh, no matter what happens in our life, what circumstances, he is never going going to leave me. I am never alone. And so I realized that even if something had happened to Mike, God forbid, there was a point where I said to God, you know what, even if you take him, I am never alone. You love me. You have a purpose for me and I will see him one day. Mm -hmm. And so to, to be able to stay in that positive place was super important. And my test being, my faith being tested grew me as a Christian and it made me more mature. And this time is made to make us more mature. Mm -hmm. God did not cause this. God did not cause this, but God wants to use what the enemy wants to use for evil. He wants to use for good in your life. If you let him. Hmm. You know, our prayer time grew. Um, time in the Bible grew so that our family was forever changed because of the reset that God put in our life that he didn't cause, but he allowed yeah. to happen. And that's what he wants to do in your life with your family, with your marriage. He wants to see marriages healed. Maybe there hasn't been a lot of time where you can connect together as a couple. Don't miss this opportunity, right. friends. Right. These opportunities, right. this may be the only time you have. And I'm telling you, I believe some of your, your families are going to look back 10 years from now. And God gave me this in prayer. And your kids or your spouse are going to say, 
remember when we were quarantined? That was the best time we ever had as a family. That is the best time we ever had as a couple. But you're not going to be able to say that unless, unless you choose that. That's right. That's right. I love what you said, that God did not send the virus. We get a lot of those kind of preachers out there. But God, it says in Romans 8, will use all things to the good. Mm. He'll turn all things to the good for those who love him. And He, you can either let the virus crush you in this season, right. or you can let it refine who you're really created to be through this season for the next, so you can be powerful. So I want to give you just three things, quickly, three things that God wants for us, his people, while we're in exile. The first thing you should be doing is replenishing your soul. You should be replenishing, I should have said soil, replenishing your soil, which is your soul, because the, the ground needed replenishing, but so does the soil of your heart. At this time, you need to draw back and say, what needs to go in that hasn't been going in a long time? Right. You know, Jesus said uh, in John uh, that, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the, from the mouth of God. And so we should be having the word of God going in us in many different facets. You should be reading, listening to the word of God, listening to worship songs that, that bring truth mm. into you. Because when we get productive, we start getting malnourished in our souls, in our hearts. And so you need to replenish that. Take time to replenish your soil. And uh, John 15, John, uh, Jesus says, abide in me. And if you abide in me, if you remain in me, get in my word and hear my words, great fruit will come from that. You, he says, without me, apart from me, you will produce nothing, no fruit. Right. It'll just die in the vine. But if you want a life that's going to be rich in fruit, get into Jesus, get into his word, and let that infiltrate your heart. The second thing you want to do is realign your values. But over a course of time, we get away from those values that God has put on our heart, the things that God wants for us, how he wants to do life together and relationship together and, and, and having lives that are built on the gifts of the spirit, you know, love, joy, patience, kindness, right? And, and we get away from that. And all of a sudden we look back and say, who are we? What, nice. did, what have we become? This is a great time to get back into your value system with your spouse, with your family, or with your other relationships, your friends. Uh, he says in Deuteronomy 6, 5, this is part of the Shema prayers. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. These commandments I give you today to be in your hearts. And then he says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, whenever you get up, when you're eating breakfast and cereal, Pop-Tarts. Talk about God stuff. Talk about what you remember about God and how he uh, helped you through a virus or a syndrome or how he helped you through this coronavirus and talk about those things and what does it mean to us and what are we becoming through those things. Those become your values that will carry you into the next season. So when the world starts pressing and demanding things, you can say, uh, we can't give up those things. Mm. These family dinners, that's a good. value. This prayer time, that's a value. Yeah. I'm not giving up yeah. these nights of right. the week. For a long time, it was we dedicated more nights in the home than out of the home. Right. And that's through baseball season and everything else. So those become your values. Third thing, let God redirect your steps. You could be in a season where God wants to change things up, but if you kept going and going, you're not going to hear him. This could be a time where you can hear God, hear him say, I want you to change some things up. I've got some new things for you, a new purpose for you. And it's all about being a light to the world. It's his, his mission for us is to be a light, unto the world. And so maybe we've gotten away from that. Maybe that next career move that you're going to do or whatever, God's saying, I want you to purpose that for me before we move forward in that. And so this could be a great time. Proverbs 16, 9, Solomon says, the heart of man plans his way, but it's the Lord that establishes our steps. We've got big dreams, but God has our next steps and he's got all that taken mm -hmm. care of. So we want to be in this period, in this season, allowing God to redirect our steps to make sure we're going in the right way, make sure we're fulfilling the purposes he's created us for. And these are some of your, just three of your application steps to get you to these things, these great values, so that you, like Holly said, can look back and say, this was the best time of our lives. So that's our, uh, that's our challenge to you. Uh, Holly wants to close it up, just talk a little bit about what the next season can look like if we commit to these things today. Yeah, and again, you just don't want to miss this. We may never have this opportunity again, and it's we don't want to be here. We wish this wasn't happening. I love the prayers, Jeff and Stacy praying, um, but this is where we are. 
And so you do not want to miss this opportunity to grow. You do not want to miss the things that God is trying to speak to you in this uh, time of a reset, this time of, uh, it's basically a Sabbath, right? We're getting this very long Sabbath that God's saying, take time to hear me, take time for a family to know me, take time to learn who I am and my love for you and your family. And so we don't want to miss that opportunity. We truly believe at Life Coast Church that this is soil for revival. Yeah. We believe that God wants to do a mighty work all through. I mean, get online. There's so many churches that people would never walk into, but they're watching it online. The, unfortunately, fear is, is um, infecting everybody more than even the viruses. And that is not what God calls us to. And he wants the church to rise up and be the church, be hope givers, uh, help people understand faith, understand that we can trust God in whatever, whatever challenges or struggles we come to. But we have to choose to rise up in this moment and not hide under our covers and be fearful because we don't need to be fearful. And we need to look for these opportunities that God has. We have some fun ones here. I, one thing that I think is so great is, you know what? We've said so much. It's so hard when your kids are in school six hours a day, when they're involved in sports. Uh, they say the average parent gets 10 minutes a day of meaningful communication with their children. Well, guess what? God just opened up all that time. How cool if your kids, all of a sudden, you become the biggest influence in their life. Mm. Instead of their peers, instead of their teachers, instead of people outside your home, you have the opportunity to become the biggest influence in their life. So if you have kids at home, take this time. I mean, and I love what the De De Deuteronomy verse, that's a verse that Mike and I live by with, you know, teach your kids as you're walking and you're talking. You don't have to sit them down every night and have a Bible study. Go teach your teenagers or your, or your middle school kids how to change the oil, how to do some basic things on the car that you've never had time to do. But how great if your kids understand that and know how to do that. And as you're with them, talk about the things of God. I know people said being creative. Like, how about take out the paints and paint with your kids. Have some fun and talk about how God is the great creator of everything. The stars, the moon, the sky. Let's paint some of this beautiful landscape. Um, we have some amazing things that you could do. You could do yard work and, and uh, talk about, you know, how, how the flowers bloom and how God created them. So do these fun things with your kids at this time. Don't live in fear because that fear is going to transfer on to them. Live in hope, live in expectation, live in belief, pray with them, do family devotions, learn instruments and worship together. Uh, take time to go for a prayer walk. We're going to ask people on Easter to do a prayer walk in your neighborhoods where you stop at every house as a family and pray for them. You can even write in sidewalk chalk, pray for you. Uh, at each house that you go by to show the love of Christ, maybe there's an elderly person in your neighborhood, you could go do yard work for them and never have to be in contact with them. There's some things you can do as a family to show them what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. And so we're, we want to walk in that expectation that God is going to do amazing things during this season that we are all, are all are on a reset and a Sabbath. So please, I would love for you to write down those things. How are you going to make this time count? So we're going to close in prayer, go back into worship. And as we do, just want to remind you of Romans 8, 28, God wants to turn this into good in your life. For those who love the Lord, mm -hmm. it's your choice to allow him. So take these steps. We're going to put some more resources on our family uh, group page on Facebook. Yes, and if you're not on that, get on the Life Coast family group. That's where church is happening all week long. And we're going to be um, having some Bible studies you can connect in through the week uh, to help grow you too and disciple mm -hmm. you. So take those steps and make the commitment and hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. Put these things on your calendar and say, hey, I'm going to do this this yes. week. Yeah, he's going to learn how to get great massages. So. Yeah, the, okay, we can do that and, and some other things. But you know, we want to make sure we hold each other accountable because I want you to be exactly what God wants you to be through this. And you want us to be exactly what God wants us to be through this. So let's hold each other accountable. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for bringing us together. Your church, we're not in a building. We are the church through the airwaves, Lord. And we thank you for connecting us, yes, Lord. Lord. We pray, 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 Lord, that we would use this time, much like the Israelites, as a time to reset a time to re-nourish our soil of our of our hearts, of our souls, that we would realign our values with you and that we you would redirect our steps to make sure we're going along your path in life and fulfilling your purposes in life, Lord. So let us commit together 
families, let the families commit to each other and to their children. If for those who are single or widows, mm. I pray, Lord, supernaturally connect them online, yes. connect them through texting, allow them to commit to one another. This is how we do life together. This is what it means to be the church. Allow all of us to grow through this and not go back to normal. We do not want to go back to normal, God. We want to see you do something amazing. Start a revival through mm. this time right. so that all of us look back and say, yes, that was devastating to some, but a revival started and it changed the world. So Lord, bless us, protect us, protect yes. all those yes, out in our church, those who are guests or uh, in our communities and our Lord, cities, Lord, Jesus. and around the country, Lord, bless them and protect yes. them, Lord. And we just want to proclaim your glory in yes. Jesus name. Yes. Amen. amen. And amen. Back to the worship. And I close my eyes to see My King in majesty Your grace compels my soul To love and draw in close And I lift my hands and sing surrender everything in you i know i'm found my god to you i bow and now until forever Jesus, I surrender. Show me what I don't know more of you. I'm desperate for your presence, longing to be with you. Lead me to a new place, more of you. Through the fire, I'll persevere. I won't submit to any fear And where I go, you've been before And all my trust is in you, Lord and Now until forever, Jesus, I surrender Show me what I don't know more of you I'm desperate for your presence longing to be with you lead me to a new place more of you and now until forever Jesus I surrender show me what I don't know more of you Desperate for your presence, longing to be with you. Lead me to a new place, more of you.
Thank you so much for choosing uh, Life Coast to worship this morning. And we would just ask you to keep connecting with people, keep reaching out, keep, keep helping your neighbors, keep connecting through social media. Uh, we're going to be doing something uh, every day. We're going to be putting a, a devotional out every day for you starting tomorrow. So be looking for that. Get into the Word of God. Take this time to reset, as Pastor Mike and Pastor Holly said, to reset some things in your life that are focused on walking with God. Father God, we praise you and thank you for the opportunity to preach the word, to sing your praises, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, ambassadors for Christ, You've called us to that mission regardless of the circumstance. So as, as a nation, as a community, as we walk through this time of, of being homebound or, or uh, restricted in our travel, can we ramp up our prayers, our relationship with you, and look for the opportunities that come to be the church. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for who you are. Heal our nation, heal our land, heal our people, and let us change this community because we've seen a need. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, all. Love you.